There's breaking news tonight, action in Congress on the humanitarian crisis on the border, and we'll bring that to you uh, as, as we go tonight. We begin, though, with a graphic reminder of what this is about. It's a new photo, which I do want to warn you is hard to look at, but we think shouldn't be ignored. With that, the photo shows the bodies of a man. His name is Alberto Martinez, and his daughter Angie washed up on the Mexican side of the Rio Bravo River. Now, they were from El Salvador and drowned trying to cross into the country. Drowned trying to cross into the United States. Even had they made it across that river, they might have faced a difficult and possibly dangerous future. What has become, keeping them honest, a human disaster involving the conditions these migrants now face in U.S. custody, especially kids. There are kids tonight who are living in filth and crowded together, young children who are caring for even younger children. They're living this way because of the numbers of people crossing the border and decisions made in Washington and policies set at the very top. A guest who joins us momentarily, a pediatrician, describes it this way. Children being held in conditions comparable, she says, to torture facilities. Extreme cold temperatures, lights on 24 hours a day, no adequate access to medical care or basic sanitation or water or adequate food. Now, those are the conditions being reported to her. It's some of the people responsible, as you'll see, simply don't acknowledge that, even as they compare the influx of migrants to a storm or a flood or a tide, as if this all fell from the sky or rolled in from the sea. At the end of the day, though, this is not an act of God. These are people, poor people, young people, and whatever you think about the case they may have for coming here, they are here. They are now in custody here. And those words, in custody, don't just mean are being held, they mean in the care of or as Webster's has it, the act or process of preserving in safety, which is not what's happening. We and others have reported on it. Here's what the New York Times wrote after children's advocates visited the facility in Clint, Texas. Now this is the facility where yesterday we learned that about 250 kids had been taken out of because the overcrowding was so bad. This is also the facility where today we learned that about 100 kids have to be returned to. Quoting now from the Times, quote, most of the young detainees have not been able to shower or wash their clothes since they arrived at the facility. Those who visited said they have no access to toothbrushes, toothpaste, or soap. There is a stench, said Elora Mukherjee, director of the Immigrants' Rights Clinic at Columbia Law School, one of the lawyers who visited the facility. The overwhelming majority of children have not bathed since they crossed the border, she said. There is a stench, she said, speaking literally of human beings, living worse than animals because animals at least have the means to clean themselves. She might have just as well have been speaking figuratively of the stench coming from places where the people responsible for all this are failing to take responsibility. Today, John Sanders, acting commissioner of Customs and Border Protection, stepped down. An official unnamed tells The Times it was not clear whether his departure is or is not related to revelations about these facilities. He'll be replaced by another acting official, the acting head of ICE, in yet another acting capacity. Today, his boss, the president, was asked whether he'd ask acting Commissioner Sanders to step down. I didn't speak to him. I don't think I've ever spoken to him, actually. No, we have some very good people running it. And, uh, you know, I don't know anything about it. I hear he's a very good man. I hear he's a good person. I don't know him. I don't think I ever spoke to him. He's heard good things about him, this official responsible for enforcing the president's supposedly tough border policy. But he's never spoken to the man, doesn't even know him. For all the president's tough talk on the border, he's never even spoken to one of his frontline officials, apparently. Or perhaps he's doing what he did with Paul Manafort, barely knew him. Michael Cohen wasn't really important, or George Papadopoulos, the coffee boy. Then again, perhaps it's not so odd that the president might be unacquainted with one of the officials carrying out his policy. He's also seems confused about one of the policies that began this whole cycle of kids in custody, zero tolerance enforcement, which separated families at the border. The policy has since been abandoned. He still maintains falsely that the last administration was responsible for it and that he, President Trump, actually ended it. And now in a new twist that this is what's driving the latest influx of families. You know, under President Obama, you had separation. I was the one that ended it. Now, I said one thing. When I ended it, I said, here's what's going to happen. More families are going to come up, and that's what's happened. Well, again, keep in mind, the zero tolerance policy that produced an explosion of family separations was conceived and executed by the Trump administration as a deterrent. They admitted that, not the president. As for the current influx, experts say there are many factors driving the migration through Mexico, mainly from Central America's northern triangle countries. 
It starts in those countries, and President Trump has said he's cutting off aid to them, or wants to, which used to go to improving conditions there and trying to reduce the reasons to leave. It continues through Mexico, which has only sporadically guarded its southern border. But right now, it seems the main problem is this influx of migrants into American detention facilities and top U.S. officials who talk tough but don't seem prepared to actually deal with the consequences of it. That is, unless dealing with it means awkwardly chuckling while shifting blame elsewhere. This is Again, the wealthiest nation in the world. What, we have money to give toothpaste and soap and blankets to these kids in well, this facility in El Paso County. Well, right now we well, do. Of, co of course we do. So why aren't we? My, my, po my point is, it's all a part of the appropriations process. Well, part of the appro appropriations or part of the stench. Perspective now from Dr. Dolly Lucio uh, Severe. She's a pediatrician who recently visited the detention center in McAllen, Texas. Dr. Severe, what exactly did, did the kids you talked to tell you about, uh, about the conditions that they're, they're being kept in? Um, they all had a very similar story. They all reported um, that the lights were kept on 24 hours. I think that was the most uncomfortable thing for them. But, you know, the stuff that alarmed me the most, like I've mentioned, is that they all reported no access to hand washing and equally alarming was the mothers with infants drinking formula from a bottle reported no access to washing the bottles for those infants. W were you able to um, to see, you know, the 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 areas that they're kept in? Because uh, I understand in the room you were in, there was some uh, some sort of wet wipes and, and, and things that could be used for cleaning. Uh, were you able to see other areas? No, we did ask for access into where um, the detainees were being held, but we were denied. Um, the area that I saw was very clean. I mean, it was an office space. It was, you know, that's where they, they did their work. But it just stood out that at every single workstation, there must have been 12 or 15 computers in that room. There was a hand sanitizer and a container of Clorox wipes. So clearly the Border Patrol officers are worried about getting sick, which I understand. Um, but it's just incomprehensible why that concern is not extended to the detainees that are in the crowded space themselves. You, you also write about seeing evidence of, um, of trauma in, in these kids. Can you explain what the evidence was, how, how, how you came to that conclusion? Yeah, the evidence that I saw was entirely based on their behavior. Um, they were all responding inappropriately for their age. They were all extremely fearful, which I understand considering the circumstances, but then after that, extremely subdued in that they allowed me to examine them easily, which is completely unexpected and inappropriate behavior for their age, I would say. Um, the three children that were, um, that were unaccompanied and that were in the daycare setting had more evidence of trauma. One of them, when he came to the room where I was, was breathing heavily the entire time. And I asked the Coast Guard officer and she said, you know, he just started doing this. But I think that trauma was from seeing his teenage brother who he hadn't seen in three weeks, who was the person he came into the center with. But initially there's no bonding. He didn't run to his brother. He wasn't glad to see him. It was just this looking straight down and panting. The two other girls that were uh, alone um, kept repeating the same statement. It, maybe it's something they're being told, but they said, my dad is getting the papers, my dad is getting the papers, my dad is getting the papers, and that's all they kept going back to, and inappropriately, I would say. Is this anything what you expected it to be? I mean, did you expect to find this? Did you, is it better, worse than, than, than you anticipated? Some things were better and some things were worse. Um, the hygiene I'm completely dumbfounded by, because even if you don't care about the humanity of it and you're thinking of dollars and cents, it's a lot cheaper to get soap than to send people to the ER or quarantine them with flu. Um, and that's common sense. You don't need a doctor to tell you that washing your hands is going to reduce the spread of an infection. So that I was completely dumbfounded by. The bottles, that's something that almost feels reportable to CPS. I mean, it really, it is. It, it just... If I had a parent come to my office and say they're not washing their formula bottles for days on end, I would be very concerned about the child's safety at home. So that I was completely floored by. The better parts is the human decency I did see. I mean, the Coast Guard officer I saw was lovely. There was a lady who was cleaning the bathrooms when one of the unaccompanied kids, the three-year-old, one of the really traumatized little girls, walked out. You know, she said, hey, and named her by her first name and gave her a big hug. So, I mean, there's good and there's bad. Of course, like anything else, it depends on 
who's showing up for work and how, as a human, with basic human decency, they're treating the people that they're there to protect. Mm. Uh, Dr. Severe, I appreciate you being on. Thank you. No problem. Thank you.